everyone and welcome to Chrisanne's Colouring Class for Adults. I'm so excited about today's episode. Uh, we're moving on from the basic techniques of three-dimensional shading and uh, blending colours together and we're going to start working with some more professional rendering techniques, um, working with water and wood and fabric. And the reason that we'll be working with water is that Johanna Basford's new book has come out called Lost Ocean and I have been saving this book until this episode to do this particular drawing, which I'm really excited about. So off we go and let's get started. And here it is, my beautiful new book by Johanna Basford called Lost Ocean, an inky adventure and colouring book. And today we're going to be working on a beautiful drawing of a sailing ship. And I've chosen this sailing ship today because it has some fabric in the sails, which I want to show you some interesting textures with. It has some wood that we're going to work with, with a natural texture of wood, and then it has this beautiful water. Now I'm going to be starting with my greens, and I'm going to block in all of the leaf areas. I've already worked out what colours I'm going to use on my test page, and I'm mainly going to be using the techniques that we learnt in episodes one and two of one colour shading and two colour shading. So I'm just going to go through and start blocking in all of those leaves and then I'll come back and show you how to make the fabric texture. To move on and show you how I'm going to do the fabric on the sails here. Now most importantly we always want to make things look three-dimensional so what I want to do with my sail is also make it look a little textured and the best way to get texture with fabric rather than trying to do a gradation of shade we want to do kind of a bit of line work a bit of textured round lines and we're going to follow the edges of the sail there and we're going to go one way and then we're going to go back and go the other way as well and you can see straight away that it starts to create this really amazing texture we want it to go really round I'm going to leave some areas of the sail quite white but I also want to also get to really dark in the corners because when we work really dark into the corners we create a lot more three-dimensionality so there you go I'm going to use this warm grey here which is called French Grey, and then I'm going to use my favourite gunmetal grey just in the corners to create a little bit of a round curve feeling. So we'll start with that, and I'll start with this big sail in the middle here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to follow the lines of the fabric around. And I'm going to go quite dark into the corners, as always. And then I'm going to work up into each of the fabric folds. And wherever there's a crease at the top, where there's a sort of natural pull up of the fabric, I'm going to go darker there and shorter where it's not creased. There you go. You can see that quite well in that section. So you go a bit darker in there and then you keep working across. And sometimes it's good to keep rotating your pencil as well so that you keep the sharper edge of the pencil working so you get that line texture that happens naturally in fabric. And now that I've gone one way, I'll go back from the outside and do a bit of that as well. There we go. Maybe a little bit in the centre coming out from there. And that's starting to look really good. I will take a little bit of the colour down and from the bottom I don't have these sort of curves in the fabric to worry about so I'm just going to give it a little bit of colour but still confidently going up and around with my texture. And now that I've blocked all of that in, oh I might just do a little bit of diagonal, sorry horizontal lines in there for a bit of texture and then I'm going to grab my gunmetal grey here it is and I'm going to go back and I'm going to shade into every corner 
and make it really dark at the top. And I can be quite textured with this as well because it's still working with that fabric texture, giving it some interest and some variation rather than the softness of all of the blending that we have learnt already. This is a lot more confident hand strokes. There we go, and that looks really quite three-dimensional and round. And that's now all of the sails done, the fabric and the beautiful sea plantation and we're now going to start on doing all of the shells on the boat and then I will come back and teach you in detail how to do the timber texture. And there's all of our beautiful shells done on our boat. It's looking really rich in colour and gives the boat a really beautiful grounding towards the water. Makes it really lovely. And we're ready to start our timber texture. And there's many different ways to create a timber texture. So today I'm going to, well, I'm working in a very small area of timber. So I really do just want to create some basic timber details. So if I start out by doing plank shadows with my darker color, and then I bring in a highlight and I saturate the page with the lighter tone in some areas that will become, it'll give the timber a little more depth when we're finished. So I've got a very dark brown called burnt umber and then I've got a light pale sand color and now I'm using a raw umber to shade over all of it. And you can see that the lighter tone comes through and the darker tone comes through as well. And then when I'm finished that, I'm gonna go back with my darker tone and from my planks, I'm going to blend in to the other colors until I get it to a point where I'm happy with the color balance. And I'm also going to need to go darker than that in some spots. So I'll have a black for the corners so that we can get some nice shadow into the corners and I'm also going to be using my gold right at the end and I'm going to be flicking through and again you may not be able to see that on camera but it gives it this beautiful sheen on top of the timber. So working with that technique I'll start with my dark umber and I'm going to work with fine lines because it's a very far away boat so the the planks would be quite small in real scale and I always try and render my materials and this is timber so I consider this a material in rendering I try to work in a very small scale and I might just do one area for you in its entirety here and then I'll move on to the other areas, just so you can see me doing it in one spot on the boat. the timber textures done as well and it's a really beautiful contrast from the green and the purple uh, it's sort of the first warm tone that we've really used there and we're going to add a lot more coolness with the water as well so it creates a really beautiful contrast throwing in that orange into the timber welcome back everyone we had a bit of a technical issue there and while you were away I have actually colored in the first part of the water so I'm going to go back and show you how to do that now so my test page here, I tested out a couple of colors and I'm actually going to end up using 
these colours plus the silver as well. And I'll show you how to do that again now. First of all I start off by, I'll just do this section up here, I start off by doing these little waves with the silver metallic because the silver metallic comes through the page and you can see it really easily. And it comes through, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it comes through in the lighter areas especially. And it looks like a bit of a water texture, gives it a bit more um, interest and depth. And after I do that, I always start by doing a shape with doing the outside edges first so that I can saturate the page because it becomes a lot easier to colour in the centred area if I do this part first. So first of all, I'm going to block some white on the tips of where I want the wave to tip and see how it becomes lighter in these lines here. I want that to happen in a few of those areas. So I saturate the page there and then I'm going to bring in my vibrant blue and I go right around with the vibrant blue and everywhere that the I've put the white it remains lighter naturally. So I'll just lock in all of that and after I do that with some of the larger areas or the areas that are going further down the page I'm going to bring in my dark navy and blend back a little bit as well. And once I've done all of that with the center for every area I want it to look like it's swirling in a wave and see how I've made it lighter in this area lighter here and then lighter around here as well it helps to create this sort of movement so I'm going to do the same thing and with my pale blue I'm going to make it light at what I call the leading edge of the wave so through that area I'm going to put a fair bit of the light tone and I know you can't see that on camera but it just gives a bit of a base and it also sat saturates the page so that it's light where I want it to be and I'm actually because this is such a large area I'm also going to do a little bit of lightness here as well not as much and I'll make it a little darker but you still just like this area you still want to create overall depth and dimension and you only want your dark areas going into corners and around the sort of thinner bits because this is a much wider area what I can do is actually create my own sort of three-dimensional shape within it so if I make this area darker and then I bring this area up, down and around, and then I keep this area in here lighter, then I'm creating my own shape within a shape, if that makes any sense. And I like doing that. It gives it me a little bit more creativity and freedom to play with my colouring in. I'm also going to be bringing in my darker tone as well into every corner so that I make sure I get a full scale of shade or scale of colour. And I might make this darker through here and then going up around to that leading edge. And overall I want the water to be a little bit lighter in these top waves, especially this large one here. This one's an important wave and I'll make a bit of lightness coming down with a couple of these as well but as I get further down the page I want it to get darker and darker towards the bottom so I'm going to be using more of this light pencil at the top and more of the dark pencil down in the bottom and also coming up through in some of them. It's always about creating variation and dimension and also looking at the way that light hits different things. that's our beautiful sailing ship done and the colors gradate beautifully from blue to purple to green and they're broken up by the warmth of the timber coming through there's a lot of detail in the timber some little silver specks coming out in the purple and the purple all gradates beautifully from light to dark so there's a lot of depth and variation there same as the green up in the leaves and I really love the fabric texture as well
So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's techniques. Uh, please remember to share this video. There's all types of links down the bottom. And hopefully there will be one more episode coming out before the end of the year. So I'll see you soon. And until then, happy colouring. Bye.